Welcome. Thank you for coming back. This is Holly May doing the signing today. And I'd like to call on Chaplain John Denny. Chaplain. Absolutely. Good afternoon. Mother Teresa said, love begins by taking care of those closest to you. And by that, I don't think she meant proximity. Or I think she meant proximity, correction. And in, in the midst of loss and tragedy, I'm humbled when I see strangers helping strangers. When someone is grieving, there are those that are comforting. When, where someone is hungry, there are those that are feeding. And where are those without shelter, there are those providing housing. South Carolina National Guard, volunteers, VOADs, our public service, our electric crews, everyone out there trying to serve one another, regardless of race, religion, beliefs, socioeconomic status, background, it's happening out of love. And that universal seed has been planted in all of us. And we can't control the weather, but in the midst of that, we get to see the beauty of our humanity. So if you would, let's pray. Great God, I thank you for the seed of service you've implanted in us to serve one another. Help us to seek out those in need, the widow across the street, the single mom with four kids, the medically homebound, or whoever they may be in our circle, in our lives that may need help. Love, help us to love, be your hands and feet by using our gifts, our talents, and energy to turn this flood of water into a flood of love so we can see the best of humanity and the best of you. Help us to not grow weary in doing that which is good. I pray all these things in your mighty name, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. John Quarrello, National Weather Service. Thank you, Governor. As of the 11 o'clock update, Florence was a tropical depression about 40 miles west of Columbia and was finally picking up speed moving west-northwest at 10 miles an hour, which is certainly good news. It is expected to accelerate northward across the upstate of South Carolina today and then finally out of the state of South Carolina sometime tonight. There have been many bands of persistent heavy rainfall across northern portions of the state. It uh, really began last night and are persisting uh, so far through much of this afternoon. Taking a look at some of the unofficial rainfall reports from across the state, highs we've come across is 16.06 inches in Chesterfield, 15.44 inches in Marion, 14.33 inches in Bennettsville, and 14.06 inches at Gallivance Ferry. Uh, and overall with Florence, the greatest report we have seen is uh, near uh, Swansboro, North Carolina, where uh, they received over 33 inches of rainfall. <coughs> Uh, because of these rainfall amounts and the possibility of another uh, two to six inches occurring across the northern parts of the state, a flash flood watch is in effect for portions of the Grand Strand, PD, Northern Midlands, and upstate. Numerous flash flood warnings are also in effect within the watch area, including a flash flood emergency in Lancaster and Chesterfield counties where life-threatening flash flooding is occurring. These flash flood emergencies also extend up into the Charlotte area. If you are under a flash flood warning, be prepared to take immediate action. Uh, seek higher ground. Do not drive across flooded roadways. Um, most uh, flash flood fatalities occur by people driving in automobiles. So uh, again, just take extra caution out there, please. There's also an increasing uh, tornado threat across the northeast part of the state where a tornado watch is currently in effect until 5 p.m. this afternoon. Major river flooding is expected along the Waccamaw, Great PD, Little PD, with at least moderate flooding along the Black Creek due to heavy rainfall from North Carolina and other areas in northern South Carolina. And this flooding is expected to go uh, well through uh, the upcoming week. Residents are advised to take preparedness actions now and evacuate or move to higher ground if told to do so by local emergency management. We are continuing to monitor rainfall amounts across the state to assess additional flooding impacts. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, John. <clears throat> First, some <clears throat> Excuse me, some sad news you already know of a confirmed loss. Ms. Amber Dawn Lee of Union County. I'm sad and sorry to report there are others that have been confirmed. Mark Carter King and Deborah Collins Ryan lost their lives in a generator 
related incident in Ory County yesterday. Michael D. Prince passed away in early hours this morning when he lost control of his car in Georgetown County on a road. Jeffrey B. Youngren passed this morning when his car struck an overpass support beam in Kershaw County. We are most sorry for those losses and our hearts and prayers are with the families and loved ones of these South Carolinians. Uh, as you all know, <clears throat> we have seen the end of the hurricane and most of the storm. It is still raining and so the the second phase of our work has already begun. It's been well prepared for. We have troops, law enforcement, first responders and others stationed all over the areas of uh, immediate concern now and those are, as was mentioned by John Quirello from Chesterfield and Lancaster and Marion and Dillon and Marlboro all down, I said Marion and possibly others uh, over in that part of the state. As you know, those rivers in North Carolina that have received heavy rainfall are coming our way, as are our own rivers, which are gathering water now from the ground in streams and tributaries and creeks, and they have not crested, they have not even begun yet, but they will. And the question is, how high will the water be? And we do not know. In North Carolina, they have set records with their rain fall and what they're expecting from their rivers. But there's another danger and it's here now and that's known as a flash flood. A flash flood is called a flash flood because it comes and goes in a flash and you never know where it's going to be but it'll, it'll be in a low-lying area, a depression of some sort, a, a valley, a low spot in a road and you don't know if it'll come or not because it depends on where the clouds are and how particularly heavy the rain is in that spot on that day. But just a couple of inches of rain can create a flash flood and that's what we are seeing now in South Carolina in these areas I mentioned. Areas of great rainfall, they're coming and they will go. They might stay a day, the water it might be longer depending on how wet the soil is and if there's any more rain. But that's not the big flood. The big flood will come from the rivers. But these flash floods are dangerous. A flash flood can wash out a road and you won't even know it. It can be a road right there in your neighborhood that you've driven across a hundred times where the water has covered the road and it looks like it's about an inch or so over the, over the road, but in fact it's washed out a part of that road. And so don't drive through standing water. And we have personnel out all over these areas. Most, uh, many are in uniform, they're volunteers as well. There are people going door to door right now in these areas, telling people to, to helping them evacuate from these flash flood areas if they want to get out. The water is not that deep. It can be, generally someone can walk across it. We don't, don't advise people to do that, Let, but be very, very careful and do not drive your car on a road that's got water on it. Now those are the flash floods. They'll be coming and they'll be going, but we're going to have some deep flooding from these rivers and we don't know how deep that's going to be. We have people <clears throat> from probably the most people we have had in South Carolina in anticipation of this flooding, the flash flooding as well as the deep river flooding right now than we've ever had before. We have federal personnel, we have personnel from nine states, the federal government has provided us with, will be providing us with assistance and funds to help once the disaster is over. But I want to assure particularly the residents of those counties that are now facing the, particularly the flash flooding and the deep river flooding that is coming, that your South Carolina team is prepared both at the state level the federal level and at the local level and please heed the warnings 
that are given to you. We do not want to lose lives to this water. This is these are avoidable tragedies that we want to avoid, and we have the team ready to help. If you need help, call us. But you must be careful yourself. You must be your own emergency manager. And if you're in a low-lying area, you need to leave and go somewhere else until this is over. With that, we'll start with our team. General, General McCarty of the South Carolina National Guard. Thank you, Governor. Uh, the men and women of the South Carolina National Guard stand prepared to continue to respond to this this emergency. We have right now over 3,400 uh, personnel that have been deployed. Uh, most of those right now are deployed in the affected area. We have been prepositioning equipment that's specially capable of working in these areas, what we commonly call high water vehicles that can be used for evacuation. Uh, we have been, uh, we have staged aircraft that are capable of conducting search and rescue and, and aerial extraction. Uh, in support of this also, uh, U.S. NORTHCOM, the commander there, uh, Lieutenant General uh, Jeff Buchanan was here today. We have been working with our active duty counterparts to preposition uh, equipment that may be used in South Carolina if the conditions require. That would be assets that would be above and beyond what the state of South Carolina and the Guard has or that we may utilize from other states. Again, uh, search and rescue aircraft, Zodiac boats and additional high water vehicles and some heavy lift uh, helicopters that could be used in certain situations, but we continue to uh, stand ready and have those personnel deployed. And just again, as the governor says, caution people to use good common sense as it relates to uh, flood type activities. We've gone through this now several times in the last few years and we've learned a lot and not much will surprise us here as long as we heed the warnings and the lessons that we've learned before. And in the end, Team South Carolina wants to get through this with as minimal loss of life as we can possibly do and we just want to be prepared to do what we can to help in that capacity. It's up to your questions. Thank you, General. Yes, sir. Director of Department of Transportation, Christy Hall. Thank you, Governor. Secretary. Thank you, sir. We, the Department of Transportation currently has about 2,300 maintenance employees working statewide on this event, and in particular, for the PD area, we have 531 uh, DOT employees currently working this event. As you, I'm sure, are aware that we had several road closures that have happened this morning, late, early this morning, uh, due to flash flooding. I-95 in the state at, at mile marker 181 to 190 is currently closed. That's in the Dillon area. US 501 just north of Gallivance Ferry is currently closed, and we're detouring that to uh, uh, SC 41 and down to US 378 to get access in. There's several other roads in the Dillon and Marion County area that are also closed due to flash flood events. We continue to do our preparation work for the, uh, in advance of the, the flood waters that the governor mentioned that we anticipate may come to the area. Uh, and we're doing our prep work on US 378 and US 501 bypass in the Conway area. Again, trying to ensure that we've got a route protected that can provide access into Horry County um, after the floodwaters arrive to the state. And we're doing this based on our modeling that we've, we've prepared for the flood and kind of a worst case scenario, looking at it to see uh, which areas of the roadway and roadway network would be vulnerable and trying to determine which areas we needed to protect. And based on that analysis, that's how we determined that US 378 and 501 bypass in Conway would be our main way in and out of the Ori area after the floodwaters arrived to the state. Thank you. Thanks, Secretary Hall. <clears throat> Director Leroy Smith, Department of Public Safety. Thank you, Governor. As the Governor's, governor's mentioned, we have five storm-related uh, deaths, and our uh, thoughts and prayers are with the uh, uh, family members of those that we lost. Uh, the Department of Public Safety continues to provi provide escorts uh, for the National Guard, DOT, and FEMA uh, vehicles. Uh, we have troopers uh, assigned to ESF 13 SLED to assist uh, the Horry County Police Department with line patrol and law enforcement and security missions. Uh, our troopers and officers are out patrolling uh, the roads being visible and looking for any roadway hazards. Uh, 
we uh, recommend three routes right now if you're on the I-95 corridor. Uh, the first one, if you're, if you're coming out of Georgia, the low country area, we would recommend you take uh, traffic to take the uh, I-26 exit. That's exit uh, I-26 westbound, exit number 86, to northbound I-77 in Columbia to uh, Charlotte. Uh, the second recommendation would be uh, if you're on I-95 northbound uh, to take the I-20 westbound exit. That will be exit 160 Bravo, 160B uh, in Florence uh, to exit 131. Uh, that's U.S. 401 off of uh, I-20 uh, to SC 43 North to SC 151 North to U.S. 601 into North Carolina, the, the town of Monroe. Uh, we've coordinated with uh, the Highway Patrol in North Carolina. We will have uh, law enforcement along that uh, route to give uh, directions uh, should the need arise for that. And another option would be uh, uh, if you're on I-95, again, I-20 westbound, that would be exit 160B uh, in the Florence area to I-77 north in Columbia. Uh, to Charlotte, and that concludes my. Thank you very much, Chief Mark Hills, South Carolina Law Enforcement Division. Thank you, Governor. Uh, we today have been redeploying personnel from our central and southern conglomerates uh, <clears throat> into the northern areas of our state. Uh, we, uh, by lunchtime today, have 281 state law enforcement personnel and National Guard MPs in those areas currently. I've been in touch since lunch with the sheriffs in Marion, Marlboro, Chesterfield, and Dillon to make sure that their needs were met from law enforcement standpoint. They say they are. We will continue to uh, receive their requests for security missions uh, from any of the local jurisdictions. There have been a number of other uh, curfews that have been put in place by local jurisdictions, and we will be out there patrolling as we are now today uh, and enforcing those curfews. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Colonel Taylor, Department of Natural Resources. Thank you, Governor. Yes, um, one thing we want to let the public know is what <coughs> we saw happen last night and through the day have, as the Governor has mentioned, flash floods. These flash floods are very hard to predict, and it, the Weather Service has put out warnings and watches for flash floods, and and our residents need to obey those. So a flash flood, as the governor said, is a flood that happens in a flash. And so this rainfall is very unpredictable. You can't model it. You can't determine where it's going to be. So we would ask everyone to stay tuned, watch your weather service reports to ensure that if you have a flash flood warning or watch in your area, um, just, just be aware so that you can take the appropriate action. If you have a flash flood and the water starts to rise, don't get in your vehicle and try to drive out because, as we've said every time, driving in flooded areas can be very hazardous. And many of the accidents we've seen already, as Director Smith and the governor have mentioned, could have been avoided if you had not been driving in roads that were covered with water. So um, one thing to make clear, the flash floods are not river flooding. The river flooding is still to come. We have good models on the river flooding. We're expecting the Little PD in the Nichols area and the Waccamaw River in the Conway area to rise above moderate flood stage Tuesday, Wednesday, and those flood waters could stay in place for seven to 10 days. Um, some of the flash flooding we've seen today, I got a report just before I walked in with some of our officers in the Marlboro County area. They've already seen some of these waters starting to recede. So that's what happens in a flash flood, and we're hoping that the other waters we'll see recede as the day goes on and we have a downward turn in the rainfall. So the message will be uh, flash floods, not river flooding. Uh, river flooding will be coming. That's the next phase we'll be working on and we have pre-positioned personnel um, through our law enforcement side. Um, they're all ready. Um, we've had officers today going through Socastee and Horry County, um, going door to door, talking to folks that are there, that are still there. They have not evacuated. 
evacuated, getting information from them, contact information, and giving them information on the upcoming flood. We're currently in the Nichols, <coughs> Little PD River area doing the same thing. I'm happy to report that most, most in Nichols have gone. They've evacuated. But we're still going through those areas in our river communities, down the Little PD River, um, talking to people that are still there, getting information from them to let them know that they may be in danger and today is the day or tomorrow is the day at the, at the end that they need to really consider leaving. So what we've seen today has been flash floods, very unpredictable, can't model them, um, but we do know that we have high water coming from the rainfall that's falling. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Joan Meacham, Director of the Department of Social Services. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, at 2 p.m., we are down to 1,183 people in our shelters. We only have 41 shelters open at this time, 30 are general population shelters, and 11 are special medical needs shelters. That is, we are filled at a 5% capacity. That's down from 80 shelters open yesterday and a 14% capacity. Of the 30 general population shelters, there is one that is currently full. That remains DuBose Middle School in Dorchester. Of the special medical needs shelter, there are 11 open and six of those, or five of those, pardon me, are full. This number is constantly changing as we've seen throughout the day. Closings are ongoing as we speak. Uh, the way the, the shelter openings occur is that we have a hurricane plan and once the hurricane plan is transitioned into a flood plan, different shelters may be open or the same shelters may be open. So we don't know the, that the shelter locations that are open now will remain the ones that are open. Check SEMD.org for the live and also check with your shelter personnel that are locally on site. We have uh, DSS workers, our value partner, American Red Cross, in the shelters. They will have a standby shelter for you to go to if you go home and find that your house is unsafe or no power and you need a standby shelter. They will direct you to that location. We're trying to get people out of the shelters it is, as it is safe for them to go home so we can return the, the buildings back over to the schools for them to open. Of the 30 general population shelters, 27 of those are in schools. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Director Kim Stinson, Emergency Management Division Director. Here, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, our uh, re priorities here at the State Emergency Response uh, Team are uh, flood operations to include supporting local evacuations and sheltering. Right now, we've got uh, 29 emergency operation centers uh, that are open to, and that's down from 33 from yesterday. Their primary focus is sheltering and the initial response focused on flood operations and some of the county impacts that they've had to this point is there's road closures and power outages primarily in the PD region. There's Right now there's only reporting limited residential and business damage. Some evacuations that have occurred due to the localized flash flooding include Marion. Approximately 150 people have been evacuated uh, to shelters. In Dillon, uh, approximately 20 people. In Darlington, uh, approximately 10 people. And then in Marlboro, approximately 200 people. So that's about 400 people right now that have been uh, evacuated to uh, shelters uh, from, again, localized flash flooding. We've had over 800 requests uh, from the local authorities that we're acting on. Se over 700 have been are complete or in progress. Uh, the governor already mentioned that we've got, still got uh, uh, personnel from nine states that are helping us. There's approximately 400 people on the ground there. We'll be setting up a staging area in Florence to uh, push logistics through to, uh, to the PD area. Uh, and uh, we're coordinating to maximize the use of private sector resources to make sure that the Walmarts and all those places are fully stocked as we stop, start this process. Uh, we have available to assist the local authorities in terms of evacuation. Uh, we have uh, our code red system which is a reverse 911 that allows us to identify selected people in a selected area uh, and let them know that they need to evacuate and we'll work that with the, uh, with the local authorities. 
And then we also have the wireless uh, emergency alert system, which allows text messages. And then we also have access to the emergency alert system, which most of you are familiar with over TV and radio. Uh, re remind everybody that uh, SCEMD.org is a good place to go for information uh, as, this, uh, as this process unfolds. Also available on our South Carolina Emergency Manager app. And right now you can actually, if you have any damage, you get any damage, you can report that through that application. And all you got to go is to go to the tools section of the main menu and then allow you to do that. And just what the governor said, be your own emergency manager, uh, have a plan and uh, be ready to react when the time comes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Are there any questions? 381. Yes, yes ma'am. On behalf of my colleagues at WBTW, um, Con the city of Conway filed an injunction in regard to these temporary dams and the possibility of flooding 1,000 homes by building this. Has any research been done for those? You are referring to the sandbags that the Department of Transportation is putting along the edge of Highway 501 in Conway to keep the water off the road. To keep that, that we must keep that road uh, open. That has been the plan from the very beginning, because there are only two good roads that, that go in there, and that's one of them. And if it's overtopped, we may lose that road. Ms. Hall. Thank you, Governor. So uh, I think one of the miscon misconceptions there may be is we're not actually damming the Waccamaw River. Uh, Waccamaw, Waccamaw River will continue the flow underneath the bridge. So we're not damming the bridge, we're not damming the, the river itself, but we're putting something in place to basically raise the elevation of the shoulder of the roadway to make sure that roadway, the, the uh, road leading up to the bridge on both sides stays dry. That's, that's the whole plan. The purpose of the operation is to keep the roadway leading to the bridge accessible and dry based on worst case scenario flooding event um, as, as the team has analyzed from the flood model. Uh, I did talk to the county as well as the city this morning. We had a conference call kind of late morning. They asked a similar question. We're in the process of looking at the model and uh, once we get that information back we'll be back in touch with the county and the city as well. But clearly our main focus is to ensure that we absolutely have at least one highway that will carry us east to west into Horry County across those watersheds that we have predicted based on actual rainfall data and flooding that's occurring in North Carolina. As that comes south, as we've seen with Matthew in previous years, we've got to get ready in advance of that coming to the state. And so that's what we're doing. It's all about planning, preparation, and putting things in place to make sure that we don't cut Horry County off from the rest of the state. And so by doing that research, it shows that the possibility of those 1,000 homes being flooded, how will you get guys then kind of re-strategize? I'd like to get the information back, and then clearly we'll be working with our county and city partners to discuss path forward. Questions? Further questions? Uh, here in the back. Hi. Uh, I'm not sure who, who should get this question, but about river flooding as opposed to the flash flooding. Um, what does your past experience tell you about how quickly the rivers will start overflowing, especially with what's coming down from North Carolina, added on to what's falling here? Thank you. Colonel Alvin Taylor, um, Department of Natural Resources. Yes, right? sir. We have, we have a good model on the real-time rainfall out of North Carolina, and we, we would expect those rivers to rise uh, in the PD River Basin, which is still our priority river basin. We do know that some of this water that fell last night will flow into the PD Basin as well. But we feel like of our current models that we're still on the same time frame of those rivers starting to rise sometime Tuesday into Tuesday night, Wednesday, the Waccamaw River Basin may actually be delayed into Wednesday or possibly Thursday morning, but we're continuing to model those river basins every day. The new rainfall last night adds new totals, which meant that we needed to go back to the model to see what effect that would have. We don't affect, uh, expect that it'll have great effect in the PD Basin, but the welcome all may be delayed in their flooding for another day from previously predicted. But we'll, we'll keep you updated. Those models are run Daily. Thank you. Thank you. Further questions? 
for Myrtle Beach residents who are uh, deciding whether or not they should return home today, um, you, is your message to them still that they are okay to get sure. back? Well, that's why we listed the evacuation order. I noticed it yesterday and it came up today. We want to be going and get back because if that highway gets flooded, which is what Ms. Hall is talking about, and that road is cut off, then they won't be able to get back, uh, perhaps. Uh, we've got two roads going in, 370, 378 and 501. Those, those are the big ones. We, we want to keep at least one of those flowing, and that's why we want to keep the water from going over the top of, of 378 because it may wash out that road. But they need to go on and get back because they might not be able to get back later. Was that part of the reason why you lifted the evacuation order when you did to give people an opportunity to get back before? We lifted the evacuation order exposed. because we determined we didn't need the evacuation order anymore based on uh, based on the facts and based on where the, where the hurricane and, and where the storm was. But uh, people need to get back because cause now the second phase of this uh, this event is upon us and that's that's the flooding. It's coming from a different direction but it's just as dangerous, perhaps even more dangerous in terms of its destructive force. And we do not know how, how high those rivers are going to be. We don't know how much water is involved, but we want to keep at least one main road open to the Ori County and surrounding areas for medical personnel, for supplies, for emergencies, for fire truck, for anything that we may need. We must have one open. So that's the other question is, you know, you evacuated these folks due to concerns about the hurricane. You know, is there any risk or any possibility or concern about them going back into harm's way of, of potential flooding that we may be seeing over the next few days? Well, the flooding that will take place will likely not be on in, in Myrtle Beach. It'll be before you get to Myrtle Beach. And, but there, there may be flooding uh, overtopping Highway 378 right there in Conway because the Welcomeall River goes right by there. So the rivers are going to be flooding. So we want to be sure that we have, we want to be sure that people understand you don't drive or walk around in a flash flood waters. You don't, certainly don't drive or walk around when it's, you have river flooding and they need to be very careful and, uh, and, and to, to be their own emergency uh, managers. These floods, water is dangerous. It's dangerous. They must be very careful. Do we have any idea of the total number of roads closed at this point? Uh, no, sir. Call on Secretary Hall. Secretary Hall. <laughs> um, we keep up to date information on our web page, and so it's it's changing as we have these flash flood events. Uh, as of this morning, we had about uh, three dozen, but that number is kind of it grows and, and changes just like the governor and uh, Director Taylor mentioned. We get these flash flood events. We get water on the road. We close the road, and then the the rainwater subsides and the flood subsides, and we we're able to reopen. As I mentioned earlier, we have well over 500 DOT employees work in this particular region actively right now and so they're out patrolling looking for areas doing prep work uh, all hands on deck whatever's needed to, to make sure that we're quickly reacting to whatever's happened and also finishing our preparation activities for the flood that's coming. And actually while you're up there um, you know some of these roads particularly 501 are built over kind of marshy swampy ground with all this water damage and with all these cars going over it um, you know, is there concern about, you know, lasting damage uh, to the road at this point? Well, they're, they're designed to, to take some water, obviously, but of course, a road that's flooded for an extended period of time, just like we saw with Matthew when we had roads submerged for, you know, weeks on end, that's part of our process is once the flood water subside, is we will send our engineering experts out and they'll take a look at the road and if we need to make repairs, we will make immediate repairs and get the roads reopened. We clearly understand what our mission is, and that's to provide mobility and access to our citizens and our businesses in the state. And our team, our team will do whatever it takes to make that happen. Further questions? Well, y'all, thank you very much. We're happy to have you here. We'll keep you informed. I also want to say thank you to all the volunteers out there that are doing so much work. Uh, thank you to, to, for the, the great cooperation and communication among all the agencies, state, federal, uh, local, the cities, the counties, uh, the legislators and private citizens who have called in and uh, thank you for President Trump for his great assistance in this and we will, uh, we've, we've weathered the hurricane and now we must weather the, the floods and uh, Team South Carolina is up to the task. Thank you very much.